Hello guys, I just got my new Raspberry Pi 5 in the mail and today we are going to find out if it's possible to upgrade its RAM. This version of the Pi uses LPDDR4X memory which is just a little bit faster than the LPDDR4 memory used in the previous model. I will hook it up just to confirm that it's not dead on arrival also that it has 4GB of RAM and then we will take a closer look at it. The Pi boots normally. And also, here we can see the size of memory that is available. But before we continue, I'm happy to announce the sponsor of this project, PCBWay. They feature a variety of manufacturing services, including many types of rigid and flexible PCBs, CNC machining, 3D printing and others. That's why they can be the one-stop solution for our projects. They also have an open source community where everyone can share and access different types of electronics projects. Also, there you can directly order the PCBs you need for every one of them. Here you can upload your designs, specify your requirements and get an instant quote for your project. Their PCBs start as well as $5 for 10 pieces. You can find the link to their website in the video description. Now let's take a quick close-up of the board. Here we have the resistor for selecting the RAM size, which seems to have only an indicating purpose as the pads for every indicated size are connected in parallel. And right behind the USB-C we have yet another PMIC that we can only pray to be made available as a replacement part in the future. Now I will quickly tape up the plastic GPIO header and the SOC. It will also be a great idea to use some kind of metal shield as the tape deflects the airflow but it doesn't reflect the heat. Then it's just a matter of using some hot air at 410 degrees Celsius with 90% airflow and some patience to remove the RAM chip. Here is the chip up close. Now a very important step is to dilute the unleaded solder using some flux and soldering iron set to 400 degrees Celsius. Next, we take a piece of solder wick and again with the soldering iron we clean all the pads so they are as flat as possible. Lastly, for the board preparation we clean the old flux and apply a fresh one. I will be using this D9 ZCL or in other words the 8GB chip found on the Raspberry Pi 4, which is the non-X variant of the LPDDR4. As I wasn't able to find online the OEM 8GB chip used in the Raspberry Pi 5. After making sure that the chip is aligned properly, I will use hot air set to 370 degrees Celsius and 70% airflow to solder the new chip in place. The soldering is done and as you can see the shielding did its job perfectly and there is hardly any damage to the plastic part of the header. After about 5 minutes of waiting on the board to cool down it's time to find out if it will boot and how much RAM will be detected. And yes, it's booting Raspbian. Also, we can see that 8GB of memory are detected, so I can say that the upgrade is successful. Now I will run a mem tester just to make sure that the RAM chip is alright. I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't move the size selecting resistor. That was intentional, as I just wanted to prove that its position isn't significant at all. About halfway through the test, it came to my mind to touch and see if the pie is getting warm. And that was my new mistake as I burnt my finger by doing so. As we all know, heat is the kryptonite of most electronic components, so I rushed to grab a heatsink for the SOC. Here you can see the pie right after I place the heatsink. 
It looks like the PMIC would also benefit from a heatsink. A 63 degrees Celsius isn't a particularly optimal temperature in my opinion. Especially considering that you can't buy this chip, at least at the time of making this video. So in short, the takeaways from this video are the RAM upgrade is definitely possible, although not really economically viable at the moment. Also, I will say that using heat sinks is a must, as the pie is a bit toasty. Lastly, please always plug and unplug things from your Pi when it's not connected to power, and also double and triple check your connections to minimize the risk of frying your PMIC, as for now it's irreplaceable. Now I want to thank my patrons James the Mutt and Michael for their support. If you too want to support the channel, you can find the link to my Patreon in the video description. Also, if you want to send something for repair or upgrade, you can fill out the mail-in form. Lastly, you can find links to most of the tools I use in the description. Getting back to the Pi, as you can see, all the tests have passed, which is great. That's about it for today. As always, thanks for watching. Till the next time, bye.